Maybe not. Maybe just me. Okay. Welcome to Worksheet 23, Term 2, Morphology Review. Morphology is a fancy term for all of our forms. Nouns, verbs, adjectives. So we're just going to do a quick review. I know we did a lot of this in class together, but you can never get enough practice with verbs. So the verb is contundo, contundere. This is obviously third conjugation. So with these charts, what we're doing is we're making all the different third plural forms, all the they forms. So third conjugation, what comes to mind is a, a different pattern, different vowels, no bobi boo, right? This is all the stuff that should kind of be cycling through your brain when you hear third conjugation, okay? So the stem is contund. The vowel pattern is weird for third. It goes o, is, it, imus, it is, uns, contundunt, and the passive con. Oops. Contunduntur. <laughs> I don't know why I picked a verb that has so many uns, but uh, contundunt and contunduntur. So that is they beat and they are beaten. Imperfect contundebans. Right, we have the e from the stem, bamba spot, <clears throat> and contundebantur. And then for the future, no bobi boo. We just take out the ba, right? And we get contundent and contundentur. So we have a u in the present. Sometimes it's an i. O is it, imus it is unt. Then we have ebant, and then we just have ent. So third conjugation. That's a pattern to uh, to take another look at. Okay. The next verb is recipio. Recip. Bio recipera, so that is third IO. Third IO is just the third conjugation pattern with some extra I's built in. So recipitis would be my uh, present form, tis for second person plural, and recipimini, so y'all receive and y'all are received. For imperfect, recipi a batis. So we have the I because it's recipio, and then we have the E because it's third conjugation. So it's a combination of the two. Recipi a batis and recipi a bomini. And then for the future, no bobi boo, recipiatis. And recipie, oops, <laughs> I made a new line. Recipie mini. There we go. So we have an I in the present, but then we have IE in the imperfect in future. We keep the I because it's third IO, and we have the E for the vowels. Those are the tough ones. First conjugation, second conjugation, come on. Requito, requitare, this is classic first conjugation, right? Third person singular, very common form, you see it all the time. Requitat and requitatur. We get a long mark for pronunciation, don't worry too much about it. Requitab, oops, requitaba. My apologies, my spelling today is awful. Requitabatur, requitabat and requitabatur. And then since it's first conjugation, we actually get to use bobi boo, rekita bit, and rekita bitur. So we got bot for imperfect, bit for future, and we keep the a as our stem vowel because first conjugation is easy like that. For the next verb, second conjugation, I know it's second conjugation because hireo, hireira, long ere. Right? This is uh, the we forms, first person plural. So hiremus and hiremor. Imperfect, hirebamus and hirebamor. And then future, since it's second conjugation, one and two, bobi boo, hi re bimus, and hi re bimmer.
And there you go. Taha! What is up? Doing a little, little verb review. I know you've mastered this, but you can feel free to stick around. Some prep phrases here, just to keep those prepositional phrases uh, fresh in our mind. Ad circum maximum, a circus in Latin is a uh, racetrack. So a circus I mean, also means circle, but in the sense of a, the circus maximus, the circus maximus, this is the big old racetrack. Ad here, of course, meaning two. So to the great uh, racetrack, <laughs> or we just call it the Circus Maximus. We don't even translate it. The name of that particular track is the Circus Maximus. Number two, sub means under. Arboribus, think about arbor day, arboretum. Uh, an arbor is a tree. Umbrosa, uh, umbra is a shadow. So if you're describing them as arboribus umbrosis, arbores umbrosi, uh, it means shady, right? They, they have a lot of shadows, so they're shady. Under the shady trees. Inter montes alpes. Inter is between or among uh, montes, mountains. And which mountains are we talking about? We're talking about the Alps. Uh, so we would probably just say in English between the Alps. And we don't really say Alp, Alps mountains or anything like that. We just say between the Alps. I'll put mountains in parentheses. Just to make sure everybody knows what the Alps are. The Alps are the mountain range that is um, at the northern part of Italy. So if you imagine Italy is kind of like, let me do this backwards for you guys. It's the little boot shape, right? So you have the big peninsula. It's hard for me to do this backwards. Um, at the top of the peninsula are the Alps. So um, if you go across the Alps, you're into Switzerland. You're going towards um, Austria if you're in the east, Germany. So that's kind of a... a a geographical border of Italy. By the famous speaker, so we need ablative agent here, a for by or ab, depending on what comes next. A uh, speaker is an orator. So the ablative would be oratora. And then famous, the adjective for famous is claros. Second declension, claro. So ab oratore claro, if we put oratore first, we're going to go with ab. If we switch the order and put claro first, it would be a. And it's just like a versus an. If the next word starts with a vowel, you put that consonant in there to smooth it out. So instead of saying a oratore, you can say ab oratore, and it flows a little bit nicer. Ab oratore claro or a claro oratore. Claro oratore. Nothing to, you can't avoid that. Against the kingdom of the Amazon. So we have a few prepositions that we can use for against. My favorite one being contra, just feels like the strongest one. Kingdom, that's the word that's going to go into the accusative case because it's against the kingdom. So that would be regnum, that's the word for a kingdom. Of the Amazons is going to be genitive, right? Because it's their kingdom, the kingdom of the Amazons. So we could do Amazonum, genitive plural, right? Because it's a uh, third declension. Contra regnum Amazonum or contra Amazonum regnum. The order there could go either way. I kind of like the genitive in the middle. It looks like it's accusative because it's got that um, but it's not. Regnum is accusative. This one is genitive plural. And I think it's a long Amazonum. With seven sisters. So our preposition is, of course, cum, with. The word for seven, septem, is indeclinable. Remember, we talked about numbers. They don't really change forms after one, two, and three. Numbers are just what they are. 
So septem is always just septem. Soror, I need to make it ablative because it's kum, and I need to make it plural because there are seven of them. So soror ibus, kum septem soror ibus with the seven sisters. And then last one here, throughout, which is the same word as through, that is per, through all of Italy, right? Through the entirety of Italy. And the of is in parentheses there because even though in English we say all of Italy, in Latin they would just say all Italy. There wouldn't be any of, there wouldn't be any genitive, anything like that. Per totam italiam. Per totam italiam. Through the totality of Italy, through total Italy, all of Italy. Uh, per totam Italiam, throughout all of Italy. Sunt multa opera, multi urbes, multi personae. Yeah, throughout all of Italy, you find many, many things, of course. Those are our prep phrases. And then finally, because it never hurts to go back and make sure we know how to decline nouns and adjectives. Uh, a little bit of practice here. So evil wizard, I'm going to start with the noun first. Incantator. Incantator. Incantatoris. Okay. Third declension. Big long word. Big long stem. Who cares? Right? All you're worried about is the endings. Incantator. Tori for the dative. Incantatorem. Incantatora. I know it's a big long stem, but don't lose it. Incantatoris. Incantatori. Incantatorem. Incantatora. The plurals. Incantatoris. Incantatorum, genitive plural um, not accusative um. Incantatoribus, incantatoris, incantatoribus. Woo! Incantatoribus, incantatoribus. Six syllable word. In cantator, you should see the verb cantare in there. Cantare is to sing or to chant. So an incantation right, is another word for a magic spell. And an incantator is a wizard, one who does magic. Now we look to the adjective. We have malus, we have mala, we have malum. My apologies, it says our there. It should say evil, of course. Um... Masculine, feminine, and neuter forms. Since we're talking about a male wizard, we're going to go with malus. This adjective is second declension. So malus, mali, malo, malum, malo, which feels so much shorter than incantatora. Mali, malorum, malis, whoa. <laughs> Let's try that again. Malos and malis. So the noun and the adjective are different declensions. Okay, cool. Taco grande. Malo incantatore. This is a third declension noun. I know that because of the is here in the genitive. This is a second declension adjective because this is how they look. Second declension, first declension, second declension. And that leaves us with Tiny Dancer. Hold me closer. So our noun here is Saltatrix. Saltatrix. And the genitive is Saltatrixus. Now I chose these on purpose because these are common uh, suffixes. Tor, Torus is a man who does something. And Trix, Trickus is a female who does something. So these are your, you could call them like profession words, profession endings. A saltator would be a male dancer. A saltatrix is a female dancer. And in English, we have actor and actress. We have waitor and waitress, right? That's where those uh, endings come from. 
It's third declension. Salta tree Salta tree and Salta tree Beator is a uh, a blesser, one who blesses, who's a man. Beatrix, Beatrix, if you've ever seen that name before, um, is female version. So anytime you see tricks or tris, that's what we mean. Salta trigase, salta trigum, salta trigibos, salta trigase, and salta trigibos. Right now you're all at home thinking, why did you pick big words, Bartoloma? Why do I have to write these long words? Well, get used to it. Some words are long. Salta treeks, treekis, treeky, treekem, treeka, treekis, treekum, treekibus, treekis, treekibus. And then the word for tiny, which kind of looks like the word for small, but it's got a little extra business to it. So parwus is small, parwulas is very small. Parwula, because we're talking about a, a lady dancer, parwula is first declension. Parwulai. Parwulai, Parwulam, and Parwula. Ah, I, I, am, ah. And then my plurals Parwulai, Parwularum, Parwulis, Parwulas, Parwulis. That's what we got for today. So just a, an overall review, right? So we have our nouns, right? Third declension nouns, get those in your brain. First and second declension adjectives, so just a good review of those. Prepositional phrases, remember the preposition says, I wanna be with an accusative, it goes with an accusative. If it wants to be with an ablative, it goes with an ablative. Prepositions get what they want. And then of course, our uh, verb forms, which are gonna show up on Thursday slash Friday's quiz. All right, 20 minute video. I'm gonna cut it here. Actually, it's gonna be a little bit shorter when I cut it, isn't it? So maybe about 15 minutes, easy one for you guys. All right, if you have questions, I'll be in office hours tomorrow. That's Wednesday uh, and Thursday if you need me. Otherwise, I'll see you in class, bye.